to the believer who's here today, Moses made the mistake. Many of you know the story. There was a second time that the children of Israel came to a place of dehydration and thirst. They needed water, and again, God spoke to Moses about the rock, but this time he said, don't smite the rock, but speak to it. It was an illustration of the fact that Jesus would not be smitten twice, only once for our salvation. He would die, he would rise again, he would ascend to the Father, and this time he would sit at the right hand of of the Father ever to live to make intercession for you and I. And so instead of smiting the rock the second time, Moses was to speak to it, even as we can speak to Jesus, and he will speak for us to the Father and make intercession for us. There are those of you who are overwhelmed by your needs, and you feel like nobody is praying for you I tell you this morning though on earth maybe no one is even though I don't believe that because I know I'm praying for you but even more importantly there is a God in heaven God the Son who sits at the right hand of the Father and he is praying for you and therefore you will make it hallelujah Mm. so Moses He did what he knew to do because he had done it before and it worked. Guess what he was doing? Relying on himself. Oh, that's good preaching. Come on, preacher, preacher. He was relying on himself. Some of you keep reaching back and trying to do what you did before because it seemed to work and bring you out. But what you're in, you're facing new devils because God's trying to bring you to new levels. And you can't put God in a formula to get it all to work. X plus Y equals Z. You can't put God in a formula like that. Because he's bigger than any formula. Let him out of the box and just let him be God. What does that mean? My strength isn't doing it this time. I feel like I should do better, but I can't do any better because I can't do it myself. But I choose to come close to you, God, and say, help! And coming close will bring closure in God's time, even if he says not now or wait between not now and wait until the moment it happens. I receive strength knowing that Psalm 23, run, one, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I will have everything I need. What do you mean? Even when I have needs, I don't have to become a needy person. A needy person is someone who's always falling apart at the drop of a hat. A needy person is someone when things are going wrong, they can't seem to keep it together. Listen to me. I'm not trying to be hard or mean. I'm not talking about going through one thing after another. I'm not talking about calling myself or Pastor Paul or one of the other pastors and say, pray for me. There's nothing wrong with that. We want that. But what I'm talking about is you don't have to fall apart and every time the enemy knocks at your door because even though you have needs, you don't have to be a needy person because you come to the fact of the truth. The Lord is my shepherd. I have everything I need. Hallelujah. What time is it? I still have plenty of time. You guys act like it's noon. Now, do your best the next 10 minutes and hold your place, and I'm going to wrap this up. If you don't have to go out, hold your place and listen. For some of you in this room, this story about Moses has some significance because of this fact. Moses did what he thought would work because it worked before. But because of his disobedience, he was not able to enter the promised land. And yet at the death of Moses, and as there was argument between the powers of hell and the powers of heaven over his body, Jude writes and says, the Lord just stood up and he took charge and he rebuked Satan. (laughs) Woo! This is good. Somebody needs to get this. Somebody in this room, closure has eluded you. But God's time is just around the corner. (laughs) And even though you haven't been able to do it, the Lord is about to stand up and say, Devil! That is my servant! But wait a minute, God calls me his servant. He's honored me, but I smote the rock and I shouldn't have. I didn't get it all right. I should have done better. He still honors you because he knows your heart. And God loved Moses so much that he wouldn't even let the devil have his body. (laughs) Oh, how he loves you and me. And God stood up and he rebuked the devil and he's going to do the same for you. And when he does, what you've been trying to make happen, God will cause it to happen. Your body will be healed. Your mind will go free. Your spirit is going to soar. 
Your family's going to come back together. Your kids are going to come home. Your mom is going to get saved. Your dad is coming back to Jesus. Those cousins you've been praying for are about to run to Jesus. Come on, somebody. That miracle you've been hanging on and waiting to happen. God is about to do it. Don't give up. God is bringing closure. Just come close to Him. So let me close out with this Psalm 23 I'm reading from the New Living Translation today I know some of you have memorized it in the King James Version It's beautiful there But I just want to read it in this easy to read language As to help bring clarity Because I want you to know that confusion Will, will cause us to be hindered from receiving closure but when God brings clarity, it's a tool that God will use to help us step into the closure that God has for our life. Oh, that's good preaching. Verse 2. He lead, lets me rest in green meadows and he leads me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength, verse 3. He guides me along rock paths, bringing honor to his name. Watch this, verse 4. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid. For you are close. Beside me, your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. See, we're too familiar. Some of you have lost the beauty and the all of God and His Word. His Word is so powerful. This, this psalm is not just for funerals. It's for the living. <laughs> when I go through the darkest valley, Solomon says, I'm not going to be afraid. Why? Because you are close to me. Your rod and your staff comfort me. You prepare a feast, verse 5, for me in the presence of my enemies. You honor me by anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessings. Surely goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life. And I will live in the house of the Lord forever. <laughs> oh, today he just wants you to know that if you'll turn, he's already right there. If you'll just turn and make a step toward him, He's already close right there. And as you come close, he's going to put you in a position 